Sampai esannya Welcome to Over the Lift Hill and another episode of Off the Rails. Today, as always, I'm joined by Max. Evening. Sanya. Hello, everybody. Billy. How are we doing? And we are also joined by a special guest this week. We have got Jacob Thompson, the Business Development Manager at Attractions IO. Hi, guys. It's great to have you on. Thanks for taking the time to meet with us today. Um, obviously, this is our... I wouldn't say regular. Well, yeah, would you, would you say regular, guys? Uh, it's, it's becoming regular. <laughs> it's, it's becoming regular. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't. It will be now. Yeah. It will be now. We've, we've, we've got the reins on now. How, first of all, how's everyone's week been? Had a good week so far, Matt? Yeah, very good. Uh, managed to get out to um, Alton Towers on Monday. Uh, mm. Experienced Gangster Granny the ride. Watch the vlog Ooh. if you haven't already. Um, yeah. I won't give too many spoilers, but it's a definite... Must ride, in my opinion. Ooh, what about you, Senya? I mean, I, my week hasn't been as exciting as Matt's. I've just been working, so that's been my week. But it's been going well. It's been going well. We're getting there. Good, 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 good. Billy, what about you, mate? Uh, yeah, it's just not really. I've just not been doing much really. Just uni work. What about you, Jacob? You've been up to much? Yeah, uh, busy week, busy week, obviously work-wise. Um, did have the pleasure of heading up to Nottingham Castle uh, today, uh, one of our clients. So got a bit of a, uh, a tour of, of the grounds before they uh, reopen on the uh, 21st of June, I believe. So yeah, it's been a busy week so far. Brilliant, brilliant. So let's, uh, me and Matt, we'll touch base on our little trip that we had the other day. We headed to Legoland Winter Resort and... Uh, you done a bit of networking, Matt, didn't you? Yeah, it was a it was a good experience for me. It was my first uh, sort of professional trip with uh, with over Liftel. So uh, we got to meet the uh, the duty manager for the day and the um, head of continuous development at the park. And it was a pleasure to meet them. And uh, hopefully we can uh, meet again and work closely together soon. Yeah, definitely. It was a very insightful day, uh, especially about Mythica and some of the changes that the park's made. So. I'm sure everyone's just as excited to see them in action as we are. Um, We also headed to Thorpe Park that day as well, which uh, wasn't as great (laughs) weather-wise, where we had a bit of waiting around, a bit of weather, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've said to Matt before, theme parks aren't always sunshine and rainbows, I can tell you that much. (laughs) Um, But no. So, right, let's talk to Jacob about, well, obviously something we focus on quite a lot is technology um and we're always you know with the with the things we've done with the you know connect and go and we talk to different people about different technology my question to you jacob is what is it that attractions io actually does for people that yes. don't know? so uh, we're, we're a mobile app provider for the uh, attractions industry we're dedicated to this space um it's grown out of the passion for, from um uh, obviously the founders of the business um, uh, and we work with um, a number of parks uh, across the globe both theme parks and zoos um, and some other attractions sprinkled in there um, and what we do is provide a, kind of a digital concierge um, for for guests and then also provide um, operators with with the technology to, to better understand the guests so they can they can really improve that that on-site experience and make it feel like a real um, VIP experience. For those who are watching who enjoy a trip to uh, stay Thorpe Park or Alton Towers, uh, you'd be very familiar with Attractions IO's work as uh, yeah. the apps have been provided by yourselves. Uh, can you talk to us about sort of the, what goes into the creation process from when the park says gets in touch and says we want to do something with you to the end product? Yeah, definitely. So I, I think it's a really exciting journey that we take, obviously, the, the, the attractions that we speak to on. So we work with them really closely, not just to provide them with an app, but to really understand what their business needs and what their guests need. Because it's so important that there are a lot of uh, differences when you go to different attractions in terms of the kind of experience they want to provide. Once we've understood that, then that ha- allows us to, to kind of tailor a solution um, to, to, to them. So we've got loads of, of different offerings like interactive maps 
apps. Uh, we've got mobile food ordering, virtual queuing. And obviously with each attraction, the more we understand, the more we can kind of um, uh, advise on, on the best route to go down. And then once, we, once we've done that kind of scoping and consultation, then we work with them, work with their marketing and branding teams to get those, those assets to, to build that branded app. And then we'll start working with, with kind of operations and again, marketing to, to, to roll it out and, and share it with the guests. So it's, it's a really streamlined process and, and fairly straightforward. Uh, we like to keep it nice and simple, but, but at the end of it, um, you, you end up with, with obviously that fully branded app for the guests and then a, a really powerful um, kind of operator platform for, to allow um, theme park zoo operators to, to start to understand what the guests want and, uh, and enjoy and engage with best. And I think that's really important as well, because I don't think many people realise just how much you have in the palm of your hand when you yeah. go to theme parks, especially yeah. the Merlin parks as well. When you go, that app has got everything on it. It's got the map. It also gives you directions of where you want to go to. It's got the queue times, which is a really, really important thing, uh, which is what I absolutely love about <laughs> the apps, is I don't have to wander around the park thinking, Oh, should I go on this? Oh no, it's got a massive queue. Let's go and find something else. It's right there in the middle of your hand, and you can see this ride's got a small queue time. Let's just go on it, which I think really helps. Um, it does. My question to you, Jacob, is: Do you think there is a market to expand? Because I know a few people that I've spoken to have said, at the end of the day, yes, it's great having an app, but they feel like most of their time is spent with their head in their phone, looking at the app than it is walking around the park. And do you think there are any ways that we could, you know, maybe change things like that? Yeah, definitely. So, so what we want to do is we want the app to be a, a kind of expansion of that that real world experience. So the, there's things like the virtual queuing um, that, that we've got, um, I believe, rolled out at Legoland Florida. Um, and what that allows you to do is join a virtual queue to to kind of just get on with your day, go and enjoy some of the, the um, uh, quieter attractions. But what we can do is you can join that queue, put your phone in your pocket, and then you'll just get a push notification when it's your time to ride and you can head over obviously get the directions um, and you've got all those wayfinding things so it, it's about really providing that that tailored experience and um, we've got loads of cool things with with beacon messaging um, to, to engage people depending on where they are in the park uh, and what that's really useful for it, it is to, to allow people to go about their day but then serve the content that they need before they even realize they need it so yeah the, I t totally understand that that kind of point and uh, and we, we work really carefully with, with the kind of technology the kind of solutions we provide to make sure that it is a an enhancement and a supplement to the day and doesn't kind of replace that that experience because it, it, it's not something that can be replaced that that, that feeling of uh, of being at a theme park or, or a zoo or any attraction yeah, yeah. No, i agree i agree because when we when i know all of us and we, we'll experience it tomorrow as well is mm. we all said to each other on the 12th of april when we actually went to a theme park we all said it it didn't feel real Mm -hmm. And to be perfectly honest, I I don't use the apps too much now because it's kind of second nature. You know, when you go to a park on a busy day, you know this ride's going to have a maximum queue time of this, <laughs> or you know you, you know where it is. And it's like, I don't personally use it. But the great thing is you see loads of people as you walk past groups, or even if I'm working, you hear guests talking. It's always, oh, how long's the queue for this? oh, let me just check the app, you know, it's, it's like everyone does it and you see everyone doing it. So I think it's definitely good. The first time I ever used the Thor Park app, I went to Thor Park. I downloaded it the day before I went. I never used it before. I didn't know my way around when it turned up with my friends. And this message came through within about 20 seconds of us arriving at the park. Welcome to Thorpe Park Resort. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great And I thought, you know, this is the coolest thing ever, you know. Yes. I'm like... Wow, that's so clever. Is that something that comes with the app so you can tailor it to give messages, like you said, sent at certain locations in the park? Yeah, definitely. So, so what we really focus on um, with, with the attractions that we work with is to allow them to almost scale that VIP experience because it, it's really hard when you've got the team on the ground that they're, they're doing their best to, 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 to engage with all of the guests and make them feel like a VIP. But by having those messages there, like you just mentioned, those welcome messages, it's just such a 
a small touch, but it but it does have an impact and people yeah. remember that. So what we can do is when we're working with attractions is we'll make sure that they've got loads of these messages set up. So as people go around, depending on uh, where they are in the park, what time of day it is, what activities are taking place, um, what shows are on, is we can start to tailor those messages and they automatically send out um, when, it, when it fits a certain criteria. So yeah. it's really powerful for things like um, a lot of the zoos um, have, have obviously keeper talks is people mm -hmm. can go on to find their favorite animal, find out where the keeper talks are, and then they can select and they'll get a push notification to let them know when it's taking place. Um, and, and at theme parks, at food outlets during lunchtime, it, you start to push those messages out to let people know what's nearby and what, what discounts they can get. So it, it's really powerful about scaling that, um, that kind of VIP experience. It's not, I wouldn't even say it's, it's only a guest thing either because it also works for the parks because as we went to Legoland on Sunday, as soon as I walked onto the car park, I had feedback come up mm. on the app and, yeah. and I gave the feedback because I was pushed to and that will ultimately help the park to improve guest experience. I don't know what, as we were leaving? As we were leaving, I had... A, did you? Yeah, and it was a case of, it. I did that because it was sort of, this will help guest experience. And is that something that you think when you're working with the parks, is there, is there ways that we can tailor future guest experience through the app? Yeah, definitely. So, so you raised a really good point there. So the, uh, the, the feedback that we collect is it's really just, kind of um, low touch. So you've got uh, just, we're saying, did you have a good day? Uh, a sad face and a happy face. Obviously, we want most people to, to, to put a happy face uh, and we'll direct them to places like TripAdvisor. And, and that obviously builds the, the, the brand's reputation, which is really important. But we also collect all that data so people can see, operators can see on a day-to-day -day basis what's going well for them, if there's any areas they need to improve, just to make Make sure that they can keep on top of, of any issues that arrive uh, arise and uh, and really um ensure that everything's kind of top uh, kind of top top standard um for, for operating uh, and you mentioned that that tailored experience for, for future visits so we can target messages to people depending on how many times they've visited when they last visited so um th there are some parks and i don't know which which one specifically that will send if it's someone's first visit, we'll send them a message to say welcome. We can't wait to we can't wait to to, to kind of uh, facilitate your your, um, your visit. If they're coming for the second visit, the third visit is we can send different messages so we can say welcome back. Welcome and it's, back. it's those yeah, little yeah. things, yeah, that really make that uh, that difference because it's such a small thing, but but it, it has such an impact to, uh, and and people will remember it. Um, mm. And it's also really good for for things like. Um, people who potentially haven't been for a while if, if they yeah. used to be regular visitors and they haven't visited in a while is you can send them a message to, to bring them back and encourage them to come back my, so my one would come up with oh no it's you again yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly well it's re it's really good though because because then you can start to really tailor those messages I to, think to those real my, loyal fans my favorite thing about the apps especially because i'm going to Holland towers next monday is when you put in the date and where you go and that comes up with a countdown because I check it every day. I was like, oh my yeah. God, it's only, it's only this many times and this many days until I go. And obviously yeah. you can also plan your day on it as well. Yeah, you can just yeah, yeah, like yeah, make yeah. a schedule, can't you? Which yeah. I like because obviously, I mean, I usually go by myself with my friends or with my dad. But one time I went with my mum, who's not really the biggest fan of roller coasters. I mean, we went on Oblivion with her and she cried when she came off it. <laughs> oh my um, God. But I think the good thing about it is because I use the app, I put in my mum because you can put it like other people and their age. And then I say, oh, mum, why don't you go? Tells you what rides are suitable for them. Yeah. Yeah. I said, yeah. why, don't, why don't you go on Octonauts? Why don't you go in CBD? <laughs> and your favourite ride. Them. I love Octonauts. No, I know. From my personal experience of the app, I think especially it's really useful in this lovely great british weather mm. where a lot of it's raining and it's like really uh, irregular as well you can't predict when it's going to rain and you know with towers um a lot of the rides shut in the rain and it's not always clear which rides are shut and because of the app you can see oh okay this ride is shut this ride is shut i'm not going to go there i think that's a really useful feature yeah, definitely. I, I think it's just so important because 
trying to communicate that to to a park full of people, especially somewhere the size of Alton Towers, it's very mm. hard to get that message across um, mm. unless you walk around with a megaphone. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it just allows you people can go in operators can can literally just log in from their phone uh, and send messages to alert people to let them know that rides are down and, and let them know when when they expect it to be back up obviously it ought to, yeah. we, can, we can update um ride closures so you can see that within the app so it, it does just really make the operators lives easier and and, and obviously yeah. from a guest perspective it is it's just having that information to hand uh, and and readily available it, it just makes that experience so much better because we know that that rides go down it's never going to be a perfect perfect day but to, to know that and be able to plan accordingly so you can change your schedule it, it really kind of does help yeah. with, with that experience yeah my question as well was and the others are used to these kind of questions um <laughs> do you think and this is my big brain talking do you think there is a way that at some point in the future we could integrate you know augmented reality into these kind of apps for example like if you going past a ride or something, you can get your camera up and then the ride, you get it up on your camera, the ride comes up and then like the queue time can emerge, you know, like you can interact with parts of the park through the app. Do you think that's a possibility? Yeah, it's uh, it's been really exciting and there's a lot on the, the horizon. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep you all updated with that, that kind yeah, of news. That's brilliant stuff. Because I think the, the, the thing... The brilliant thing, but also the scary thing, is these days technology has no end. On your phone as well, I mean, I see things where you can scan your room and then push a button and you can change the colour of your walls or see what your house would look like with new wallpaper and stuff like that. That's all from a, a basic app. So that's what I find really fascinating. And that's why I love working with technology companies is because there is no limit to what you can do if you want to do it technology makes pretty much anything possible so uh, definitely with the ar stuff as well it's quite exciting to think of where we could be going with you know one day instead of looking at a map you know your phone is the map and the, you are looking at the map you know you can get directions come up on your screen from the current view like i don't know if you've seen those apps where you like you hold it up to the sky and it it gives you like a map of the stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that in a theme park with rides on it would be so cool. That would be like, look, oh, this ride's over here and in real time mm -hmm. navigation kind of stuff. So I think, you know, you can integrate pretty much anything to those kinds of apps. So I think it's really exciting. I love it. Yeah, it, it, it's, I think just uh, technology is just, it, it's such an exciting space to be in, especially within this industry as well. I think it, it, it's really, we, we've seen an explosion in a lot of, I say new technologies, but technologies that obviously have been around, things like virtual queuing, mobile food ordering, things mm. like that have just exploded over the last the, the last year and, and yeah. it's become yeah. the norm now. It, 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 the smallest pubs and restaurants and cafes have all got mobile food ordering and, yeah. and that is yeah. something that, that there's been a lot, I know, covered um, uh, in some of the IAPA presentations around kind of using technology for, for um, food ordering. Uh, mm. we, we've yeah. got um, mobile food ordering at a couple of the parks that we work with and it, it's just, it, it's another opportunity to remove cues for, from from the parks which we all know is, is the worst bit of the experience so uh, to, to remove that it is just it's really powerful to allow you to kind of get on with your day and, uh, and yeah i would personally like to see virtual queuing come to uk parts like a lot more because um yeah. it, it just sounds like such a useful thing it obviously means you can make the most out of your day so exactly. you're not spending all this What's time the worst just thing about being in theme park is waiting in a queue because yeah. once you're in that queue you think sometimes especially if it's a busy day you feel physically trapped mm. and you don't enjoy being crammed into a queue not so much now with social distancing but you're in a queue and you spend you feel like you're spending most of your day in a queue and I'm sure if you've yeah. done research on it you probably spend more time in queues than you do definitely. anywhere else in the park yeah, definitely. So having virtual queue for you to be able to go off and do stuff like that and walk around the park or, you know, find another attraction while you're waiting to go on that ride that you really want, it maximises your day and changes the experience so much. Yeah. So I agree, Billy. I think it should be more of it in the UK. 
just linking on to what you said, Jacob, um, just from like a business point of view, um, obviously because of COVID, everything's had to sort of go uh, online and technology is like sort of booming, as you've been saying. Mm. For Attractions IO, what's it been like? What's business been like? Has it been quite busy from, from like a sales perspective as well? You stole my question. <laughs> Sorry, I was yeah. just like just talking about it. Yeah, really good question. Um, yeah, so so it has been um, it has been really busy, which is always really positive. I think that there's been um, a few ups and downs as places have gone into lockdown, and, and we've we've just had to work really hard to facilitate that. Um, but I joined the business, um, I think, in end of June, early early July last year. So it's so right in the middle of the pandemic, and mm-hmm. it's been it, it's been really nice to see. Um, I guess um, that the industry really come together and support each other. Uh, and we've had to play a big part of that and make sure that we're really listening to it, to the attractions as we, um, uh, as we work with them. But I think going into kind of the end of last year um, and the start of this year, parks obviously know that they're going to be able to reopen regardless of, uh, uh, of what restrictions are in place. There is going to be some something there. And, and obviously, thankfully, we're in a position now where they are open. Um, and we saw a lot of parks really investing in technology. So I, I think it was it was that point where they realised that this is, this is here to stay. It's solving a lot of the problems that, mm. that have been highlighted through COVID, but, but actually have been there forever. I think virtual queuing is the, the perfect point is... V- Queuing's always been a problem, but when social distancing came in, it, it legally then <laughs> became yeah. a problem that had yeah. to be solved. But I think we, people realise that no one wants to be queuing, no one wants to be stuck mm-hmm. in the queue when they could be on different um, different rides, checking out different attractions, potentially grabbing something to eat. So yeah, it, it's been really busy, which is is great, um, and I think we, we we can just continue to to see this growth in in the industry. It's um, mm. Yeah, there's so much going on, and I think if you keep up with the news, that you, you, you'll see the kind of um, new technology that's being rolled out left, right, yeah. and center, uh, different yeah. attractions. Uh, yeah, I think from a business perspective, virtual queue is really good at the moment for parks and stuff because obviously they won't. If you're not spending ages in the queue, you can go and buy stuff, buy food, you know, increase the actual profit of the park. So I think, yeah, I just I'm a big fan of it basically. I think as well, obviously. I'm not saying COVID is a good thing, but I definitely think that doing having COVID come into the mix has made digital things more out there. So it's created a digital boom that is going to stay, I think, because I never heard of Zoom. Never. (laughs) I'd never heard of it. COVID came along. I started using it every day. Now we're able to meet people, I still use it. And I will probably continue to use it. So I definitely think, you know, it has given, obviously it sadly did take a toll on a lot of industries, but the digital industry, I think, did gain something. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think definitely there. It's been a, we we kind of had a, a real push around it being a catalyst for, for that change is, is it's made us, realize uh, as a uh, as an industry that there are massive opportunities for for improvement for change and technology can really bring that so like like you said it, it's solving a lot of, of problems that were already there but but a lot of the solutions are 100 percent here to stay because they don't just improve kind of social distancing and uh, and things like that but they actually improve the, the overall experience i've sort of got a bit of a follow-up question on from that as well mm. um, were you as a business expecting these changes to come and it sort of years down the line but do you feel as if covid has just accelerated the move towards app-based theme park experiences yeah definitely it's a really it's a really tricky one because for me i've always been um very technical and technology has been a part of, of everything that i do but i think it has become really apparent how much it's accelerated i think even from not only from a, an operator experience but from a guest experiences i know that potentially older people are less likely to adopt uh, technology, mm-hmm. but they've had to get used to it. They've had to use Zoom. They've had to, to, to get on video calls. So I, I think as a, as an industry, we're really seeing that, that people are either more comfortable with using technology, but in most cases are actually um, 
are actually expecting that kind of experience, especially when you compare it to, to things like, um, obviously we've been stuck at home watching Netflix and, and things like that, those digital experiences. It's really important for, um, for, for the, the real world experiences to kind of keep up and supplement that as well. Mm, definitely, definitely. Um, and also, so moving on from that, um, what is sort of the future for Attractions IO and what have you got sort of moving into the future beyond COVID? Yeah, so so obviously, uh, I think uh, now that the industry is starting to, to almost rebuild, I think it's going to be for, for, for at least the, the near um, to, to medium term is, is we're going to have to be there to, to help with that recovery. So with things like mobile food ordering, with things like virtual queuing uh, and, and different ways of engaging guests is there is obviously uh, financial benefits to to, um, to that kind of technology. So increasing transaction values is, mm. is a big thing. And I think that the, the big focus for, for us in terms of helping operators is oh, increasing spend uh, spend per head and that that average average spend because guests are obviously previously it was it was about getting as many guests um through the gates as possible but now there's capacity uh, capacity restrictions you, you get parks are really having to make the most of every guest there so if they can yeah. upsell experiences upsell um food things like that then then there's real opportunities there to to, to help with recovery and and i think just just going on to, to that real uh, kind of long-term future it is who knows I, I think after the year we've had um we could expect kind of anything and i think mm. we're ready for it and, and we're ready to, to see where the industry goes very exciting mm. and um Obviously, the, as as we mentioned, the move to digital has been long in the works. Ever since the App Store, it's been a gradual sort of. Well, I say gradual. It's been an exponential growth into using the apps because it's not only social media, but if you think about how we have to do the track and trace apps and QR codes have become a big part of yeah of uh, of life now. We're sort of living in our phones. Um, and is that something that you will look into sort of increasing your portfolio of what you provide as a sort of as a business? And um, what do you feel that you could do to, to further enhance guest experience in the yeah. future? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, and I think, yeah, over the last year, our our kind of food ordering solutions, our virtual queuing solutions have, have, have come on um, leaps and bounds and really evolved um, so quickly. And I think that for, for, for me, the direction we go in is still um, is still really open and, and there's a lot that we can do but for me i think artificial intelligence um, mm. and that kind of route is going to be really big in, in providing better guest experiences using using that 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 artificial intelligence to to, to really tailor um tailor those experiences and just take it that level beyond kind of what it is currently um so I, I think that there's just yeah there's so many exciting things on the horizon um uh, and it's just for, for us really focusing on what's going to add the most benefit to to the guest experience uh, and in turn to, to the operators i suppose it's sort of always weighing up sort of your priority when you're creating are you because ultimately you are creating for the operators but they are essentially creating for the guests so is it sort of a something that comes into consideration when you are creating new products do you sort of look at it from a guest standpoint or a operator standpoint more do you weight them evenly when you're looking at it or is there sort of do you lean towards the operators yeah do you know what that's a really interesting question it's something we've been we've been looking at a, a lot of the time we kind of focused on that um the, the the guest experience which is still very much at the forefront of what we do but what we we ha we have to realize is that that the operators are, are the ones that really understand their guests and their, the specific needs of their guests. So we're really shifting to that focus of empowering the operators to provide those better guest experiences, because ultimately if we give them the tools that they need to, to make that guest experience better, they can, they can obviously go off and, uh, yeah. uh, and deliver that. Yeah. I think it's just, the whole thing has boggled my mind. I think it's, I just find it all so exciting. Mm. I have no words really. It's always good, to, always good to leave people speechless with, uh, yeah. with with what we're doing. So yeah, no, it's it's yeah, uh, really exciting times, and 
yeah, who knows where, where, where things will be in the next two, three, four years. But I think, um, yeah, it's just about keeping, keeping an eye on technology and, uh, uh, and seeing what opportunities kind of arise um, with, with developments and, uh, yeah, with new technologies as they come. I just a bit of a, obviously, not in a negative way, but do you think that there can ever be so much thing as overdoing it with technology? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is the, the real um, kind of area that we're trying to focus on. It, it is, uh, yeah. we've seen a, a big shift over the last year as people have been stuck in their homes. It is that competition between the real world experience and, and digital experiences. So Netflix, um, PlayStations, oh, yeah. all, all yeah. these things that keep people in the house. So what what we're trying to position ourselves to and what we are positioning ourselves to do is to allow real world experiences to keep up with and uh, and and kind of um compete against those digital experiences so it's all about supplementing the real world experience i think because because like you said it's so important you can't i don't think there's anything that can replace that that thrill of of going on um going on a ride or or seeing your favorite animal at the zoo so it's all around around just um providing that that added layer of the experience so mm. I, I definitely i think that, that there is the point that that things can go too far and it's just about really making sure that the the technology supplements um supplements the guests in the way that they, they need and want i suppose we've got to have the customary question so jacob <laughs> what is your favorite roller coaster yeah yeah we've we've got to know. we have to know Got to go. Yeah, choose so wisely, uh, Jacob, choose wisely. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, funnily enough, um, it was uh, GeForce at, uh, at uh, Drake yeah, Manor. I wouldn't but, know. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've not been on it. I mean, I it's don't never will. there anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah it, unfortunately, oh. not there anymore. Um, so yeah, that that was that was obviously um, yeah, unfortunately not there anymore. But but was one of her rides at Drayton Manor. And um, I think um, also, I'm not sure whether it can be included, but um, Apocalypse is still one of my favourites. Um, I think you just get such a thrill for, from I'm it. I'm so, so excited to go on it. Just... Yeah, it's, it's I'm, awesome. I'm a it's bit awesome. nervous to be honest. It's good fun. You, you'll enjoy it. But um, it's yeah, unfortunately, it detonator. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, you're not feeling with confidence. Uh, I've um, I went on Hurricane Condor at Port Aventura, which is quite quite That's significantly why bigger. You, isn't it? Yeah, and it's quite significantly significantly better than Apocalypse. But I know people have been on both, and they've always said Apocalypse is just miles miles better. It's just you know Hurricane Condor has the height, which is, makes it apparently scary. But it's all about the force of drop towers, I think. So I'm, I'm really excited to go on it. Yeah, it'll be good fun. It'll be good fun. You'll uh, you, you'll enjoy it. Sadly, that brings us to the end of today's episode. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. <laughs> <laughs>